You're listening to True Crime Arizona, the podcast. Hey everyone, host Brianna Whitney here. This is our exclusive phone interview with Tammy Smith, played in its entirety. She was investigated as part of the missing baby Gabriel case, and at one point tried to adopt him. Tammy almost backed out of this interview and only agreed to do it once I sent her my questions. Hi, Tammy. Hi. Thank you for doing this. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I was, you know, I saw those and I was like starting to get nervous. I'm like, oh my gosh, it sounds like they're trying to like, once again, say that, what did I do? You know? We just want to ask questions that I've seen in the case files or evidence um, and get your take on it because it's been a lot of years. Um, And just going through the files and audio and things that I have from either like police departments or things like that, I wanted to ask you more questions about it because a lot of it hasn't ever been played in full. I know you met Elizabeth in the Indianapolis airport. Um, What did you think of her when you first met her? And what was Elizabeth's interaction like with Gabriel? When I saw her, she looked like a very young mom. I thought maybe she was a teenager at first. Um, And she was with a mother. Well, I thought it was her mother. Um, The woman looked to be maybe in her 50s early 60s, maybe. Um, And they were having very deep conversations. Um, Elizabeth was crying a lot. Um, She was holding the baby, but not up to her chest. She was holding him way down, you know, like almost in her lap, like barely, barely hanging on to him, you know. And I could tell that they were having very, a very distressing, either sometimes it looked like an argument, sometimes it just looked like a, a real distressing, serious conversation. Um, and so this went on, it seemed, for at least an hour or so. This was in the Indianapolis airport. And, and you um, to be coming back to Arizona, and so was Elizabeth, correct? Yes. I don't know where she was flying from or if she was in Indianapolis. I don't know. But she had a brand new baby. And she had been talking to this woman. I assumed it was her mother and they were going to fly together. But then the mother left. She got on a flight and she left and she said goodbye. They hugged each other and said goodbye. You and I thought, oh, okay, the girl's leaving with the baby now. She must not be a teenager because apparently she's leaving with this baby and her mother's flown off. Um, But that wasn't the case because Elizabeth stayed. And so after maybe an hour or so after the lady had left, um, I saw her cry a little bit. And so I went over there and just started consoling her and talking to her. And she was very talkative, um, very talkative person, Um, just giving me a lot of information very quickly about everything that's transpired in her life. Um, And I guess I was an open ear for her. And so for, I don't know, it seemed like a few hours, she just talked and talked and I listened for what she was telling me was that her grandmother wanted her to adopt out the baby because she did not want her to be with Logan because of what was going on in his life. And so therefore she had told me that grandma said that if I get rid of the baby, then I can get rid of him. But as long as I have the baby, I will have him in my life forever. And so I guess grandma wanted her to go to college and she was willing and all this stuff. So that's what kind of, you know, those were things that transpired. She spoke about the baby's daddy. She spoke about many things. When we got on the plane, as soon as they shut the door, I noticed, um, well, when I went in, I noticed she was in first class. And then as soon as they shut the door and you know, everybody was getting all their luggage in. She came to the back and handed me the baby. And because I had already spoken to her about the fact that my husband and I had been wanting to adopt, right? Right. So she came and handed me the baby and a bottle. That was it, not a diaper bag, just a baby and a bottle. And um, said, here, I guess you want to hold him or something like that. I don't remember exactly how that part went because it was really weird and awkward and I didn't know what she was doing. And so um, and so I'm thinking, OK, um, I couldn't get the baby to cry most of the time, um, but I fed him his bottle um, and then I had to go up to first class and basically had to beg for the diaper bag. 
Um, and so I got it and went back there um, and took care of him um, as it was, you know, starting, you know, when they say everyone buckle up, they're getting in the seats, we're going down. Mm -hmm. um, she came and she took the baby from me and she said, I'll take him back now. And then she went back up and, you know, into first class. And so I was thinking, you know, um, what is going on? And so what I did was I decided, you know, I, I had been praying and I know this was a boy, but, you know, the, you know, I'm, I feel as though I'm very close with God and I, I speak to him a lot. And so therefore I hear from him a lot. And so, um, what I, you know, what I heard was that we were adopting a baby girl and her name would be Sarah. But this was a boy, so I was a little confused at this point, but I decided I'm going to write her a letter and give her my name and phone number and my email address. And if her and her boyfriend um, have come to that agreement, then they would have to give me a call together. You know, she met my husband out of the airport. Um, we, he came and picked me up in the big red Hummer mm -hmm. um, with my daughter all dressed up beautifully with a big bow in her hair and you know, and I don't know if I don't know if that struck something in her, you know, um, because I remember her telling me that she looked us up and I don't know what that meant. But she knew that I owned um, a bunch of these medical centers. So I don't know what I looked you up meant. But um, she also knew that we lived in Scottsdale and had a, a house in Scottsdale. I, there was a lot that she knew, but I didn't know how she knew. So anyway, that's that was my first impression of her. And and then I didn't hear from her until she called me at 10 o'clock at night. Um, I think it was maybe seven months later. OK. And, and what happened with that? Because there was at least a period of time when you guys were trying to adopt Gabriel, correct? Um, not during that time. There, it was a very, very short window. Okay. Um, so we didn't we never heard from her. Right. So. We drove off, she drove off, and then we never heard from her. And then all of a sudden, and our, you know, our phone records prove all of that. You know, our emails prove all of that. Maybe seven months. I can't be for sure. You know, I don't know dates. Um, I do have a brain injury now. And so dates and times I would, we would actually have to look at, but I'm, I'm fairly clear on some dates and times in my past, in most of them. Don't hold me on dates and times, okay? <laughs> sure, no, yeah, just, just your recollection of roughly what happened next, so about seven months later. Yeah, so about seven months later, um, well, let me, let me go back um, two weeks before she called me. I think that's quite important. My husband and I had already decided um, maybe six months prior that we're done trying to adopt. And you know how it goes. As soon as you stop trying to have a baby, boom, you get pregnant or boom, you, you know, you adopt, yeah, right? That happens so often. We bought our house in Scottsdale and we're like, you know what? Why not? Like, let's have fun. Let's enjoy life. I mean, we're, we're finally, you know, being able to make money to where we can start enjoying some life. My husband was getting old as he called it. And, you know, and he's like, I want to do things, you know, he's like, it, you know, it'd be better if we didn't have a baby. And I'm like, you know what, you're right. And we all three discussed it as a family and decided we won't do it. And so we, we very much dug deep into our career, um, which was the colonic center. And so, um, so here we are digging into our career focused on the career okay and at the same time I have such compassion for my patients because I too was sick like them well I'm sick now but I was sick again before <laughs> um, all those years ago and so I know what they go through and so I wanted to help more people than just the ones that I see that come into my you know centers and so i decided i'm going to write a book so i bought the website called the jesus diet.com and the book was going to be about the elimination diet and what and how to put things back into the body and and why we shouldn't eat you know blah 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 i don't need to go into all the book. and so all of that being said i worked with a doctor um in town in phoenix and he was a naturopathic doctor and I was getting as fat as I could get and as sick as I could get. I don't know if you've ever heard of Super Size Me. It's a movie. And I was basically doing the same thing, eating fast food. And I mean, it was bad for right. 30 days. 
And so in the midst of these 30 days, <laughs> um, on the very last day, I go to get weighed in with my doctor. And I thought to myself, hmm, I'm passing up Jack in a Box. This will be the last cheeseburger I ever have. I better stop now <laughs> before I get weighed in. And so I stopped to have a cheeseburger. I go in there, I go to take a bite of my cheeseburger, and, and a woman comes in big and pregnant. And I mean, she looked she would, looked either about to deliver right now or she was pregnant with twins. I mean, she was her belly was huge. But she had a little girl with her about three years old, and um, she had tried to order her an ice cream or something, and then she started bending over in pain and then went to the garbage can and held on it and bent over. So I helped her little girl and went to her to find out, are you in labor? Shall I call 911? And she say, no, it's something. I don't remember what, but she knew what it was. And she said it was okay. She just needed to sit down and have water. And so, um, we got to a point of her baby. Um, somehow she was crying, um, over the fact that nobody will adopt her baby. And when I heard her say that, I asked her again, what did, what did you just say? And she's crying. She said, I'm about to deliver any day. And the family that was going to adopt my baby backed out. Now I have nobody and I can't bring this baby home. I have a three-year-old and she'll get attached. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And my heart sunk. And I thought, you know, we were going to adopt and we, you know, we agreed right. not to adopt and 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 this baby has was she said had down syndrome and to me that would be such a great gift to have a baby with down syndrome so i would have loved that and i i told her um i explained that we were going to adopt but we decided not to i said but i will talk to my husband and i will ask how he feels about it because it has to be on him and i can't i can't like force him or push him and she said i i understand you know and so um we ended up calling her back letting her know that yes we we all three of us agreed yes we would love to have a down syndrome baby um, my husband's reaction was you know i'm i'm old and i'm gonna die soon and at least this baby boy will be there forever and you won't ever be alone. And I'm like, but what, what about when I die? You know, right. reaction was yes, we'll adopt the baby. And so, you know, she had me, I think, meet the mother. And then I met the, the boyfriend and, and then they all met my husband and Hannah. And it was, we were starting to get to know these people and they loved us. And, um, my attorney, Ken Shutt said, we have to get an attorney for them. And I, and so I'm like, okay, that's fine. And so he found an attorney friend of his, um, because we don't, I mean, we didn't have money to like, just go pay an adoption attorney, $50,000. So we had a friend from church who happened to be an attorney who had never done an adoption before, <laughs> um, do this. And, and he had been interested in wanting to learn how to do adoptions. So it was kind of like, you know, he was learning on this case and we were doing this together and learning it together. And so when you do that, you make mistakes, you know? And so he definitely learned through this mistake. And so did I, but, um, anyway, and I'm talking really about, um, Gabriel, not this baby. But with this baby, we did learn a great lesson. Um, the The parents decided um, that they would go and find an attorney. I'm telling them this attorney is free. You don't have to pay for it. We're paying for it, right? Right. And so they're they're saying, no, we don't want you to use that attorney. But what does it matter if if you want? To, I mean, I'm not telling him this, but in my mind and Jack's mind, we're saying, what does it matter? what attorney we use. I mean, it's what it, it's, it's an adoption. If you, if this is real and legit, it doesn't matter what attorney. Right. And so my attorney ended up calling me and telling me that, um, they decided to go with the other attorney because that attorney called him. And so they signed with the other attorney anyway. And the attorney called and you would have to ask Ken shut himself, the attorney, how much they wanted from Ken the attorney was asking for an amount and I don't remember the, it could have been 30 or 50,000, something crazy like that. And you can ask him what my response was. Um, I'll let you know. It was, I'm not going to buy a baby. No, 
absolutely not. <laughs> and so um, that was that. Well, when that but, falls through, then how do you get reconnected with Elizabeth? Okay, so all of this is happening on or around the same week. It's all going on, transpiring, okay? So then all of a sudden, no, this is this was days before all of this. Days before is when Elizabeth called us at 10 o'clock at night. And I answer the phone, and she, she says, this is Elizabeth um, with Gabriel. Do you remember me? And I said, I have a niece named Elizabeth. And she said, do you remember me from the airport? And I said, oh, Elizabeth, the one with the baby. And she said, yeah. I said, what's his name again? Gabriel. I said, okay. And she says, um, do you still want to adopt him? And it was very quick and abrupt. You know, she just like kind of interrupted there. Do you still want to adopt him? And I was like, whoa, I'm really choked up. And I'm thinking, what is going on here? All these people throwing babies at me at once, you know, <laughs> all yeah. of a sudden it's like within days apart or something. And, um, and I said, isn't he like almost a year old by now? And she's like, I think she said he's seven months old, you know, like, like I got it, like you got it wrong. You know, it was like, it was just kind of awkward, you know, I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, I, I didn't know. Um, I said, but um, no, we actually have a baby um, that's going to be born by C-section in three days. I think it was three days that he was going to be born. And um, and so as soon as I said that, my husband motioned to me and said, what is going on? And I, and so I said, hold on. And I told my husband and he says, tell her, let's talk about it. We'll call her back. My, my husband really wanted him. If she doesn't want this child, then there's a reason. There's a reason, you know, and I don't know. So I told her, I said, look, if you still feel this way tomorrow, then you call us back tomorrow. I said, it's nighttime right now. And you're going to wake up in the morning and you're going to be like, why did I do that last night? I said, so um, you go sleep on it. And if you feel this way tomorrow, then you can call me back. OK. And so we hung up and she called me back in the morning. She said, I still feel this way. She said, I've been planning this for a long time. And I'm saying, why didn't you ask me? Why didn't I get into this plan? I mean, I didn't ask her that, but I'm thinking, well, if you've been planning for me to adopt your child, why am I not in this plan, you know? So anyway, um, we go over there. Do you want the full story? I mean well, so we get to the point where you end up writing somebody else's name on the adoption papers for Gabriel's father. Right. How did and that, you get and that to that kind point? of does. That kind of does need the full story. <laughs> yeah, you know, I I would like because, to know the, the behind the scenes of what happened to get to that point because that's ultimately what you were convicted on. And so I'm wondering how you got to that point of doing it and yeah. if you knew it was wrong at the time. Yeah, I actually, no, I didn't know it was wrong because my attorney, again, told me to do it. <laughs> And I believed him. He even said when he, you know, when I was on trial and he was on the stand, he says, I told her to do that. He said, there's nothing wrong with that <laughs> um, because the law states you have to put somebody's name. Now, I will tell you how that came about. There was a lot of stress and anxiety going on because she was getting really weird with me, making a lot of phone calls daily, um, sometimes multiple times a day. And it got to the point where I didn't understand what does this girl want? Does she actually want us to adopt this baby? And it, it just was seeming to me like she was playing a game with us. And she was acting weird. She was wanting me to stop whatever I'm doing and come all the way up to Tempe, take her here and take her there and all these weird things going on. And I, and I know now that she was lying to me about a lot of things. But at that time, I didn't because... I, I just don't lie. I don't. You know, I will tell the truth. If I think I accidentally lied like I did in this case because I realized that I accidentally lied, I I came out and told them I, the, I that's my handwriting. I I I wrote that and they could not have convicted me had I not agreed to them and had I not confessed to that because I do not lie. Um, and I know they say people don't, but that's not the truth. How that's did, not the truth. How did you end up signing the papers, but not talking to Logan first? 
signing what papers and not talking to Logan? The adoption papers, so writing a different name there, on no, there. No, 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 no. There are no such thing as adoption papers. There's no adoption papers. There never were. There are the papers that you signed the different name. Oh, are, oh, are, oh, no, no, that's not, no, honey, that's not an adoption paper. No, what that was, um, he had taken her to court so that he could get rights to the child. And so she, ha he was trying to take away all of her legal rights. And so that's, again, her telling me, come here, go there, go, you know, and me not really understanding or knowing what's really going on because she's lying to me about what's really happening, right? So these papers that I put, I didn't sign. I didn't sign anything. Um, but what I did do, I wrote something that my attorney told me to write. And he told Elizabeth to write, but Elizabeth didn't write it. And she was in line and she got out of line once and she was about to get out of line again. And the man told her, if you get out of line again, you have to come back tomorrow. So she handed me the papers and asked me to go over to the desk over there and write it down. This is the one thing in this entire story that screws up finding Gabriel. Everybody has their whole mind set on, oh, but Tammy put her cousin's name. Give me a break. Anybody who's going through an adoption does these things in every state in the, in the United States. This is a part of adoption process. However, my attorney didn't, he didn't tell me exactly how to do it properly. I didn't know that I wasn't allowed to write on her paper. I know that Arizona is one of, you know, anyway. I don't want to get into the laws, but, you know, it's, it's part of the adoption process. And at this point, we did not know who the father was because Elizabeth told my attorney and she told me, both of us, that there was potential of two fathers. And so my attorney wanted a name and she refused to give the name because she said Logan knew him and he would go do something to him, which I'm not going to describe. I now know that... These things were not true. I don't believe Logan would have hurt anybody. And she was so. telling you that he would. She was telling me a lot of, yeah, yeah. A and lot of so, negative things about Logan. Yes. And so it was really scaring me and frightening me because here she's got this paperwork and it's saying he's going to take 100% custody away from her. And the stories she was giving me, she was this sweet, innocent girl who's being abused by him and by his father, um, emotionally, mentally, and, and they're taking her money and they're doing all kinds of things to steal her baby. And, and he's maybe not even the father. And so here I am caught in the middle. And there's a part of me that's really just wanting to get this mama help because I know she didn't want to give up her baby. And I wanted to help her keep her baby. And if that meant for me to be a babysitter or... Or for her to, you know, live in our, our guest house, whatever, because I felt so sorry for her. I mean, the things she was telling me and about what was happening. And I don't want to say those things because I don't think it's fair be to the other person because I don't believe those things now. Did but I did to talk to Logan first. No, because nobody knew his, nobody knew how to get a hold of him until she gave us the, she gave me and my attorney the, the paperwork, whatever. She called it a rap sheet or whatever. My attorney told me not to, because that was, you know, she was supposed to, but not me. I, it was not my and I, I wanted to ask you about these calls that are documented between you and Jack and Elizabeth right before this alleged meetup was supposed to happen that Elizabeth said um, at that park in San Antonio. And I know you said you did not know of a meetup or what was going on in San Antonio. So I'm curious as to what all of those calls between you guys around that same time were about. Um, I would, I would kind of have to know the dates and I would have to look at the paperwork and I'll tell you why. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sure. Let me think. I'm not sure if those are the dates that, that the police and FBI were having me message her or if I, oh no, this is okay. Look at, okay. If you have those records, go also look at Logan's records. You'll see that Logan and I and or Logan and Jack were also con in constant communication at the same time. Go look at it. You'll see that. Like I'll be talking to 
Elizabeth at the same time Logan is talking to Jack because he's letting he's letting Logan hear what Elizabeth is saying because we're trying to help Logan at this point to locate Elizabeth to get her back. So I think that might be that time frame. I don't know. It would have been um, around December 27th. I, I again because of my brain injury without looking at, at without looking at the paperwork in front of me and, and the phone calls, I, I can't just, you know, say it off the top of my head. I really can't. I know there was some talk that you guys had some either friends or other family members in San Antonio that Elizabeth may have been going to. Is there any validity to that? Never, never. We didn't know anyone. Oh wait. No, I remember. Okay. So my husband, um, we didn't even think about it until the person, you know, afterwards. Um, no, he's actually a, um, he's a, um, I would say like a famous pastor, singer, songwriter. I don't know. Um, but he was a friend of Jack's um, in the music business many years ago. But it had probably been, you know, probably five plus years, maybe 10 years. I don't know, since he had seen him last. And so I think the FBI had to check him out. The FBI also checked out a um, group that I was a part of, which is called IAC. And so that's an association for colon therapists. So they had to check them out as well. So the FBI checked us out and cleared us. And they checked us out extensively. Everybody checked us out extensively. So you still to this day definitely claim you didn't know about Elizabeth's meetup or the couple that she allegedly gave Gabriel to? No, we knew nothing whatsoever about it. Um, I really believed that she was coming back. We were doing everything we could to get her to come back. Um, again, like I said, I'm, I'm not going to lie. And so I literally looked up on Google, can I adopt an adult? Because her, her fear was that if she came back, she, they would take away the child because of his dad. And so I told her that we would help her and she wasn't totally believing us. So I looked up, can I adopt an adult? And then I told her, I looked it up and this is what it says. And I read it to her and it made her calm. It made her happy. And I said, so we will be willing to adopt you. And Gabriel could be like a grandson. You know, you can go to college. We'll babysit. Um, and we will even, if you want, we can even do the visits between um, Gabriel and Logan. And we can, that way you don't have to see him. We'll drop him off and we'll pick him up for you, you know. Mm -hmm. And so that made her feel really more comfortable. So we thought that we had her. We thought we had her in the net, you know. And so, I mean, if you look at all of our correspondence, all of our text messaging and, and any messaging back and forth, you're going to see us saying, you better get back here. You have court. You need to get back here. Right. You know, you're going to see that kind of stuff. And you'll also know if you look through the files, you will notice that she never, ever mentioned that Tammy or Jack sent anyone to her or had anything to do with this until she got on the airplane with um, Detective Ramirez, you will find this out. And it was noted in court that she lied because what she did was it was accidentally recorded. And in court, she said that Elizabeth wouldn't talk to her. She, she invoked her right to silence the whole flight home. But then when she was in court, she's saying all these things that Elizabeth told her. And when they asked when it was told, she said, when we were on the plane. There is a recording of, of Detective Ramirez, if you will find it, Detective Ramirez telling Elizabeth on the airplane, well, do you think it could be Tammy and Jack who sent somebody to you to get the baby? She planted it in her head. You can go look for it. You'll find it if you look for it. It's in those archives. It's, it's in the audio. It, within the archives as well, there is an audio recording of a phone call between you and Elizabeth when she's in prison. There's a couple phone calls, but it comes to a point when both of you are blaming each other for the fact that Gabriel is missing. How did it get to that point? Well, um, I'm being told by the police that, that she killed the baby. You know, and at first I'm thinking the police are lying to me about all this. 
And, you know, and I'm thinking, you know, what's really going on? Because we we were talking to Logan and we thought everything was okay because there was a lot of different things he and I talked about and my husband. And so we were very confused because there was a lot of lying going on and the police refused to show us. um, They said they had text messages from her um, saying she killed the baby, but they refused to show us. And so I wasn't trusting the police either. I wasn't trusting anybody because everybody had lied to me. And here there's a baby missing, you know, and people barging in my house all day, all hours of the day, you know. So I'm sorry. What was the question? I totally. I just was wondering uh, when you got to the point where the two of you were blaming each other for the, the meetup and Gabriel being missing. Okay, so once I realized that she actually did do something, you know, because I, this is what I honestly thought because of all the things she told me and because of what she was saying on those last days, um, telling me about the, she's so afraid of Logan and she thinks him and the dad is after her um, and coming to get her. We were just afraid for her. So honestly, like I thought that he had done something and I didn't know. I didn't know what, and now I know it's not him, and it is her that did something, you know, and and I think at that point, I did find out that it was real, and when I, when I heard her voice, when I heard, when I heard what she said, I didn't like her anymore. And I didn't want to help her anymore because even if she didn't kill him, even if she didn't kill him, how dare somebody say that about their child? How dare somebody say that about their child? What are you referring to when you say you you found out what she was saying? It's in there. I don't want to have to repeat it because I really don't believe that she killed him. But, but at the same time, I'm not 100% positive either. And that seems to be the, the feeling from a lot of people involved in the case, really unsure where Gabriel is now or really what happened. In your heart, do you think he's still alive? Today, I do. Every, sometimes, sometimes I feel a sinking in my heart that he's not. But today, I do. Because you called me and that gave me hope. And I pray, I pray that he gets to be back with his daddy and that his daddy and that his family can be happy with him and they can all be happy together. Have you heard of at all in the most recent tip that people are working on or know about that there was possibly a a Steve or a Shalinda that took or adopted Gabriel? Are those names, have you ever heard of those names? Well, the girls' names, no, but the name Steve, I mean, you know, Steve is everywhere all over the place. I don't, I don't personally know a Steve, no. Okay. <laughs> You've never heard no. of any, a Steve or a Shalinda that could have Gabriel at this point? No, I haven't heard of anybody having Gabriel except for the weird stuff that, that, you know, when the trial and, you know, around that time and mm-hmm. I, I was told to give it all to my attorney. So I, you know, I okay. did give to other places and he's like nope you have to give them to me now so they were silly things that kept going around and apparently everybody was checking them out so what's your reaction to elizabeth being pregnant again um i really don't have a reaction because through all of this i've learned not to judge anyone ever ever (laughs) so i'm i'm not even going to bring myself to a point of even acknowledging it you know I give her to God let God judge her do you find this whole situation as bizarre as it as it all seems to to everybody yes extremely extremely what do you say to the family or the couple that may have Gabriel at this point, if they end up listening to this or seeing this or hearing this, what would you want the family that has Gabriel to know from you? I would tell them that God is your judge 
and you will be judged one day, whether here on earth or in heaven. But if you give this child up and surrender this child and you go and ask God forgiveness, then I believe you have a chance with God. But if you don't, the word of God says that you don't have a chance because you have not, you have not, you've not done right. You've taken, you, you've taken somebody's child and you know, it's not theirs. And so I ask you in the name of Jesus to give up this child. Amen. Before we go, is there anything else that you want to say or add? This podcast is for, it's your side of the story right now. So anything else that you want to say, I, I would like to hear that. First of all, I want to say to the family that I wish they understood what was really going on, what was what was really, really going on and how much love I had for them and still have. And and that I wanted so badly just to tell them, like, say, come to my house. Let me tell you what really happened. Let me tell you the whole story. You know, yes. So this baby. Yes. So the baby can really be found and be found quickly, because if we could all collaborate together, I think it would have been easier to find him quickly, you know, but the the, um, detective Ramirez, there will lie after lie after lie. And I just I can't deal with people who lie, because if I don't know the truth, then how can the truth come out? A lie plus the truth does not equal truth. It equals a lie. Only truth plus truth equals truth. So we got to all band together. And so I think that if we did that, I'm, I'm still willing to do it. I'm willing to do anything to help them find this baby. I, I love this family and I have nothing but love and compassion for them. And I never tried to do anything against them. I only, I was trying to do all that my attorney told me to do it all the way it was done, you know, not knowing what to do. While, while running a very large business and being very busy um, with all, you know, um, yeah. And then having this woman throw a baby in my lap and not even knowing it was coming and, and then, you know, having me run back and forth, run here, run there. I mean, I was I was like a chicken with my head cut off or something. I don't know. It was, it was a crazy, crazy. And it was definitely not me, but my PTSD was definitely in full swing. I can assure you that. Yeah. Um, the other thing I want to say is, um, that, you know, the, I I didn't want to blame people, but, you know, I wanted, I wanted people to be, um, thoroughly looked at, you know, let's see what, so we could find him, you know? And so the grandmother, Elizabeth's grandmother, it's not a blame. It's not a blame. It's just saying, Hey, um, apparently she wanted the baby adopted out. And it is quite strange that, you know, she wouldn't help Elizabeth with her baby. And, and that was part of the reason why she had to put the baby up for adoption. Yet grandma wanted her to put it up for adoption. And then after she does this bad thing with her baby, grandma comes and gives her $50,000 for an attorney <clears throat> um, to help her out of the thing. And then she, you know, um, just it, it, like, it, it's just the weirdest things. All of these weird things kind of, it's, and, and maybe just like it was weird for me and Jack, things looked weird. And it's the same with the grandma. Maybe the fact that she went to Florida and then grandma moved there. I mean, it just looks weird. You know what I mean? Um, but it's not fact. But it's, it's again, at least take a look. You know what I'm saying? Like, at least take a look. Maybe grandma... Um, called a company. Maybe she called an adoption company during that time frame and said, hey, my granddaughter's there. You know, I don't know, but at least look. And that might be the greatest clue ever. I know she's old and I don't want her to go to jail. She doesn't know any better. You know, she, she I don't even know if she's still alive. She, I don't know anything about her, but at least look. That's all I have. All avenues to be exhausted. Yes. I mean, look at her phone records. Look at, I don't know, whatever. And my, and when the, when I told the investigators, this detective Ramirez, they all laughed at me like they're going to go look at her, you know, and they acted like I was an idiot because they were just so, this woman, detective Ramirez was so dead set on nailing me because she believed I was hiding the baby so badly 
that it was like she couldn't see any other avenue but Tammy. And and that is what broke my heart because I wanted Gabriel found so badly. And that's why I would go on TV every day for, I think it was a few weeks, I don't know. And then after that, they had all my interviews and they just kept running them for years. But, um, you know, that's why, because they said, if you, you know, they said, if you get on there and talk, then we can talk about Gabriel and that will help us find him. But if nobody gets on there to talk, then we can't put him on there without somebody talking. So it was up to me and Jack because the family was devastated, so they couldn't talk. Well, I really appreciate you doing this call. I know it's been a lot of years, um, but we're we're all hopeful that any little thing may lead to helping to find Gabriel someday. Thank you so much. Thanks, Tammy. Okay. Appreciate it. Okay, Thank bye. you. Bye-bye. That phone interview was on May 5th, 2021. We could only speak to Tammy because Jack Smith died years earlier in a car accident near Payson, Arizona. Again, Tammy only served 30 days in jail for forgery and conspiracy to commit custodial interference. True Crime Arizona, the podcast, is hosted by me, Brianna Whitney, and produced by Sergio Hernandez. It's a production of Arizona's Family, 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona. To watch the video version on your smart TV, download the free AZ Family streaming news app.